Right, I think this is working. Yeah, we'll say that. So, um, yeah, a little, probably a quick session, um, but I was at my desk and I, I've been thinking uh, for a wee while now that um, PI Spy, which is a thing that I made back in the very early days of working at Textualize and working on Textual, it was, I think it was like in the first month or so, and we did a sort of dog fooding session, there's a series of blog posts on the... Um, on the textual blog where uh, I think myself, Rodrigo and Darren um, all ended up writing bits and bobs about things that we'd, we'd worked on and the like. Um, and PI Spy was one of them that I did. Um, where's my... So this is it. Um, is reading... Ah, yeah, there is a green... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Try again. There is a screenshot. It was really quite straightforward. Um... It was just a little tool for typing the name of a uh, package um, in the Python package index, and it will come back and show you the information about it. It's probably a wee bit clunky now. Um, it was definitely pre-workers and things like that. In fact, quite a way we workers. Quite a way we workers? Quite a way pre-workers. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, it's um, it's really going to be quite old. It uses, in part, the Markdown widget, and I'm fairly damn sure the Markdown widget has changed. Well, in fact, I know the Markdown widget has changed since I first worked on this. When I first put this together, the Markdown widget in Textual was basically, I think it was like a static wrapping around a rich Markdown renderable. Um, obviously Markdown got a complete overhaul since then and now it's a you know, honking great big collection of other widgets and things like that um, so my plan is to just look at it and see how badly broken it is um, it probably still works, there's a good chance it still works but I want to just sort of tidy it up and drag it kicking and screaming into 2024 um, I know the code is going to be formatted how I used to tend to write Python code and everything, how I still prefer to write uh, Python code, but I recognize that everyone loves them some pear pay, and so, yeah, I'll black it and all that kind of stuff. That's the idea. I don't know that I'll make any... In fact, I'm, I know I won't make any substantial changes to it today. What I want to do is just get it to a state where it's running with the current version of Textual. That's my plan anyway. I might tinker with it a wee bit more over the next couple of days just to um, tidy it up. In fact, as um, I just realised, I dragged... <laughs> Let me do this. I'm always doing this. I, I dragged my browser over to show something off and then I was still on the main camera feed. Um... So yeah, this is the repo, and you can see, you can see how old it is because it's still like the header in the textual app from the screenshot is the old brown, which turned out to be, I think it was like considered. There's like there was some blog post that um, Will found I think, and then got being his bonnet about, which was, it's you know the ugliest color in the world or something because apparently we can measure these things. And, um, yeah, uh, so the the header of Textual got a different default colour and things like that. But also gives it away that when I took the screenshot, which would have been when I first wrote this, um, Textual was on 0, 050. 0, um, and actually, yeah, it's two years ago that I did most of the stuff. What have I changed? I did something last year. What did I do last year? Yeah, just did some cosmetic tweaks, and that's about it. Um, so yeah, let's let's see how badly this has uh, degraded. I'm, I'm using bigger fonts in my terminal, and also in Emacs as well, just for streaming again. And it's just it's weird to me. Um, right, so I freshly cloned this. So I haven't even got a virtual environment up and running yet. Actually, first things first. I want to bump it because it's probably going to be wanting to use... Oh, that's right. 
Yeah, not terrible. I'll ignore that. I got a little weird thing going on with Kitty at the moment, where in the most recent update, there's some images. Uh, sorry, some characters with the font I'm using are just not showing properly anymore, and they used to. And it's some weird thing. And if I use the same font in, say, iTerm, it's perfectly fine and all that kind of stuff. So I need to figure that one out. Mm, okay, it's still kind of working. Still kind of working, actually. That surprises me. So obviously everything here is clickable. You know, all the URLs are clickable and stuff like that. There should be, there we go. There's a requirement so you can kind of go, okay, well, it relies on rich, which takes you to rich and stuff like that. Ooh, ooh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Wondered what was going on there. I was scrolling away and I wasn't sure why. Okay, so it hasn't degraded quite as bad as I thought it might have. I can follow through and follow through. Um, but as I look at this, I, I, I kind of... Um, I can definitely see things that uh, I could improve. For example, some of the, uh, the scrolling's weird because maybe I should just move over to iTerm for the, for this. You, the weird flickering that you could see um, is down to how Kitty reads the, um, uh, the scroll wheel stuff and everything. But like some of the stuff that's here, like um, all the URLs and, and the information, uh, well, the, the URL and the other information for a particular file and everything, these could be tidied up and made into uh, collapsibles, for example. That could be a good way of doing things. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of things there, but mainly I just want to get this tidied up. So let's have a think. First things first, this is, yeah, this is even still using setup.py as well, which is not how I do things anymore. Right, I'm going to start gutting some of this stuff. So let's have a look at our pip file. Still using vermin, things like that. So, right, first things first. Textual doesn't have the devs thing anymore, so I will... Rid of that. I could change this as well, such that it doesn't actually use HTTPX anymore. Um, I could just use the built-in um, uh, HTTP client and stuff like that and just use um, threaded workers, that kind of stuff. I probably don't even need types, pigments and type setup tools anymore and things like that, so I'm going to gut that stuff. They were probably workarounds for issues with um, uh, type checking and stuff like that. So I'll drop those. Um, don't need vermin anymore. Don't actually use that. Cool. Right, so we'll look at my make file. That's. I can probably just swap that out for. Let's borrow from. All good, all good, all good. So, so far so good. Right, I want to do black and things like that. Throw in some pre-commit as well. There we go, and borrow that from there. That should be uncontroversial, I think. 
Right, should be able to do that as well. Let's um, reform uh, reformatted all my stuff. Just going to do a reset up. Okay. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, hitting the wrong um, key. Right. Stage you, stage you, stage you, stage you for the moment. Is we going to work? Looking promising. realized I screwed up. I mean, it kind of doesn't really matter, but let's just stash that for a moment. Right, let's do it all on a, yeah, on a branch. Unstash that stuff. There we go. Right. Stage, 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 and stage that. So far, so good. Look at all those. In fact, let's just check. Right. Restart my LSP. There we go. We're good. Just going to have a quick scoop through all the packages, check that it hasn't really, the eye slot hasn't messed with anything too badly. Oh, there's apparently a lot of things in there aren't needed anymore. Uh, I'll come back to that. There's um, so there's a handful of imports aren't used there anymore, and it probably comes down to at some point in the past maybe I did move over to when did I move over to. Hmm. I obviously changed over to a slightly different um, widget or something like that, which in turn used the markdown or something. I don't know. But yeah, there's a bunch of imports that aren't there anymore, which are probably hangover. Well, ah, hangovers from a earlier version, I would imagine. Um, there's definitely some interesting style choices in here. Oh, I've still got types in the doc strings as well. That 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 kind of takes it back. Simpler times, right? Um, I shall come back and tidy those up. Oop, there's a big gust of wind outside, and I just heard someone's bin go flying. Hyper overrides the clone. Uh, okay. That's probably not a good choice. Oh, right, no. It, uh, it's because it's overriding in an incompatible way. Right. That probably needs um, tidying up as well at some point. Okay. I think we're mostly okay. Oh my god. Using um, the old way of doing screens as well. It's kind of yuck. 
You definitely have to change that as well. There's there's just no reason for doing it like that anymore. Okay, let's. Right, that's the code tidied up. Next. What next? Do I think there's anything else in there I need to worry about? I think what I will do is... Oops. Uh, start moving this over to okay that's good and then um, set CFG Let's see if we can do this without uh, really screwing up. Description I'm taking from there. Rather than get clever, I'm just going to do that. Capitalized it like that, and it's so weird. Um, I was obviously having one of those days, right? Um, version is going to be that, readme is going to be that, URL is. That I am most definitely and without doubt the author. Ah, Python. I. Why did I make Python three ten the minimum? Not that it really matters. Obviously, use something. I suspect it's down to the way you do typing, and I probably wasn't. Um, adequately using um, future imports and typing extensions and things like that is uh, likely. Right. Don't need that. Don't need that. Do need that. Should be that. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. May as well, shall I base it on the latest um, textual? May as well base it on the latest textual, right? What be the latest textual? Can't remember off the top of my head. Zero fifty-six-four. Looks promising. Looks promising. Looks promising. Haven't got anything hung over, so that's good. No one likes a hangover. Um.
Do I still need to set up .py? I don't think I do. Do I? Can't remember. No, I don't. Right, and lose that. I think I need that. Okay. Can we make a package? Yay! actually build a package. That's um, surprising to me. They work first time. I don't know why. Why is it surprising to me? I should I should have more faith in myself, right? Okay. Hmm. Well, that actually went a little bit better than I was expecting. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right. I think that's the main stuff. I think that's the main stuff. It definitely needs um, a revamp in terms of how it looks and things like that. Um, this things I'll do, like probably turn off the command palette, there's not much need for that. I mean, I suppose you can do that, but um, this thing here, which is a, you know, you can click on to bring up the command palette. I tend to lose that these days anyway. There's also this thing of being able to click on the, um, header that makes it bigger and smaller which serves no useful purpose whatsoever so I tend to turn that off in um, most of my apps pretty much all of my apps interesting I just noticed something I'm showing no dependencies for this project, but this project definitely has dependencies. I wonder if there's a little bug there. Um, very interesting. Oh, maybe they are there and it's just not scrolling anymore or something like that. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. That's what it is. There is stuff there, but it's broken. Um, it's not scrolling anymore. So there's, there's definitely some balkage there, shall we say. So that probably betrays how old the code base is. There's probably something to do with whatever I've used for um, encapsulating uh, the display here um, such that it's not scrolling anymore weirdly it was a wee bit earlier goodness knows why does that thing still work? oh yeah it does I'm not even sure what that really told me but it was some data that was available when I was playing with the app so that's, that's where it is Oh, uh, the F2 thing. Yeah, it does toggle between the screens. I guess the one app where actually having um, the screens done the way they're done makes sense. I'm still not convinced by that way of doing things myself. Okay, anyway. Um, that's 
mainly what I wanted to get done. So we're nearing a sort of bonus time. So the first thing I want to do is figure out. Oh, yeah, I was going to tidy these out, wasn't I? Don't need you. Apparently, I don't need you. Don't need any of you. I don't need you for some reason. I'll tidy that up. Oops. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's definitely a lot of things I could tidy up in here. Um, much has changed. Much has changed. So it's definitely package info, which is a vertical. And it probably wants to be a vertical scroll now. I bet it's as simple as that. I bet. I seem to remember this actually having uh, quite a bit of bit rot in the early days as well, just because um, various containers got changed quite a bit. And I don't need to say it can focus because I think. Vertical scroll can do it anyway. Oh, hang on. Okay, looks like I still want a vertical as well. Hey. Well, that was easy enough. that interesting oh That would be it. <laughs> um, I typed in the name of a package that doesn't exist. There is no um, PI spy on the um, package index. That's a genuine bug. I'll come back and look at that. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is... I should be sensible, right? I've left myself one. Oh no, there's someone else. Who's that from? Oh, yeah. Um, 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 MK Doc Strings Dude. It's bad, I've forgotten his name. I'll have to go back and have a look at that. Yeah, it was a thing about. Yeah, improving the metadata. He came up with some good points actually. Yeah, I did say, I'm going to come back and give it a revamp. Uh, November last year, so um, I suppose, not right this session, but this is one of those things I should probably look at. Um, actually, I'll pop a, um, pop a little thing in here. I'm going to, I'm going to make it self-referential, actually. Um, let's go meta on this shit. Um... What was I going to do? I was going to do this. It's going to do this. This. You can't see what I'm doing. Uh, there we go.
There we go. I've committed myself to doing it now. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Right, so what was it doing? Um, forget about that. Um, right, what was it doing? What was it doing? I was going to close that window there for starters. Um, there's something I was going to do solves that little problem. Um, it's going to be a whole bunch of things in here, um, especially when it comes to styling, that date from way back when, yeah, there was real differences in how styling worked, um, especially when it came to uh, sizes relative to containers and all that kind of stuff. So that probably needs a bit of uh, bit of work as well. Hmm. Right, first things first. Well, it's not first thing. It's like nth thing. Right. Um. I wanted to It's a bunch of things I'd change here now. Definitely a bunch of things I'd change here now. Definitely raises the question why did I make that async and then await that at the end? There may have been a reason for that. Doesn't matter, that's not important right now. Um, what I did want to do is. Tidy up that header. Let's tidy up that header. Yay, there we go. Ah, why didn't that work? That should have worked. It's got rid of the header icon, but... Oh, 
Ah, I see. I know why. There's no good reason why on a screen that would be default CSS. There we go. It's not overriding it anymore. It should just be CSS. Screen should trump other stuff. Um, that a wee bit. Whole bunch of things I can tidy up in here. Um, actually that sort of that there does hack back to that issue um, that I added the extra comment to a wee bit earlier. Um, in that yeah I'd I just kind of pull out very specific values and yeah there can be all kinds of things there's certain values that I'm obviously really interested in I'm really interested in and I want to highlight in a certain way um, and as I said earlier this this was a fairly quick hack just to explore some things with textual in the early days um, and it can definitely be done um, can definitely be done tidier now and more generically now as well so I think that's definitely a thing I will sort out um, in fact no no doubt about it I def it that definitely is something I will sort out um, the other thing I'm going to do for now is I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, that's it. Right, no command palette, it's not needed. So it serves no useful purpose. Um, just trying to think. Short of actually um, starting to make uh, try again, starting to make substantial changes to this. I think that's most of what I wanted to do. It's it's kind of tidied the whole thing up. Let's um, see what state the linting and the type checking's in. Okay. These lint errors about attribute is defined outside of init. Um, it's right, it is, and this is another sort of mild shortcoming in the way that um, a, a idiomatic textual application would work, where generally, if you're going to um, if you're going to assign, you know, if you're going to create a widget and assign it to a property of your container, application, whatever, um, you'll be creating it inside Compose. You, you, um, it, it's, it just makes a bit more sense. It's, uh, you know, it makes it easier to do it. So this kind of thing here, this is where input is getting created. Um, but I, I don't really need that anymore. So I can get rid of that one. Um, so, but where I was going with that was um, PyLint's actually 
you know, quite correctly complaining about that. And actually, maybe it would be handy for little things like that um, to have some extra rules. You know, if there was a Pylint textual package or something like that, a bit like, is it Pylint Django? Can't remember. I remember using that back when I was doing a lot of Django stuff. Um, where there'd be things idiomatic to Django that uh, broke the you know normal rules for Python, um, and it allowed for them. Uh, it, it kind of glossed over them uh, or checked them in a different way. I think I'm just going to too many there and then we're just gonna go probably don't I don't need that anymore just do that could start it off there rather than query rather than query twice but ugh. um oh <laughs> speak of the devil hi there how's it going <laughs> uh tim is it timothy or timothy I, i'm not I've, i'm never quite sure how to actually properly pronounce your name um uh, you know, maybe that's just me anglicising, um, uh, or doing the anglicised version of it. Um, so yeah, the, the reason for the self-referential um, uh, comment on the issue was I was I'm just actually dragging uh, PI Spy, sort of kicking and screaming into 2024 kind of thing, and. Um, I went and raised an issue to myself because I noticed uh, a, a little bug and I thought I'll deal with it later. And then realised that you'd actually... Uh, ah, both are fine. Okay, I'm forgiven. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of... I, I remember... I, I saw this issue. I was like, oh, I've left an issue for myself. Hang on, I didn't write this issue. And then like, oh, crap, yes, we were spo uh, talking about this. Um, uh Timo, oh, there's a bloody icon in the way of the chat and I can't get rid of it. Um, I'll have to wait for it to scroll up or something. Um, OBS has been weird. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I, I, and then I saw your issue and thought, oh, crap, yeah, we spoke about this, didn't we? And then literally just a moment afterwards, I was looking at the code and thinking, oh, yeah, I need to tidy this up. Hang on, that's the thing he was talking about. So, yeah, over the next day or so, I want to go through and sort of really revamp this application because as, as I you know I'm repeating myself here a little bit but as I was saying right at the start of this this oh thank you for the uh, uh the dots just to push it up so I can actually read it <laughs> I appreciate that um uh Timo T Timothy is that I, I I'm not even going to attempt an accent um what was I saying? Yeah, so um, in the early days when, when I did this, it was like a quick hack. It was like an afternoon's work, really, to uh, build this um, app, maybe a little bit more. And it's had one or two tweaks since then as improvements to or changes to textual sort of broke th the layout and stuff like that. But I've never really paid it that much attention. So there's a lot in it needs tidying up, an awful lot needs tidying up. Um, so yeah, one of the things I want to do is, um, I didn't read it uh, back too deeply, but I seem to remember the, the point you were making, which is an entirely, entirely correct point, is, um, where's the code, where's the code, where's the code, I've forgotten where it is, this, this honking great big mess of hard-coded bullshit, um, is not a great way of doing things. There are definitely things in the metadata that I'd like to look for and show in a certain way and prioritize and things like that. But my understanding, if, uh, as I say, I didn't read the issue back um, 
properly just now, but I seem to remember that the whole point is, and actually I seem to remember you tweeted something about this the other day as well, didn't you? About how um, you actually enjoy adding many other kinds of fields that people don't normally use to that metadata. Um, and you know you lean into it quite heavily and quite rightly so and so a tool like this is obviously um, uh, not really um, acknowledging the benefits and the effort that goes into good package metadata authoring and you know you're obviously doing uh, a sterling job of putting all kinds of useful information in the package metadata and a tool like this because it's hard coding things, he's not going to show that, and that's a shame. So yeah, I'd like to address that. Um, I definitely would. What was it doing? I forgot what I was doing. That's what happens when I... Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. Let's just see if that still works. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Probably because... Probably because... Yeah. Just only one input. No, still broke it. What did I break? What did I change? Oh, I think I know what I changed. Yes, 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 no. Right. Read your own damn code, Dave. I got two things called input. Yeah, the horizontal called input, and I had a button called input, and I got an input. That's weird. What was I thinking? That's what I was probably. It's probably one of those slightly coffee fueled afternoon hacks where I was just like bang 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 and I, could, I, I remember the time when I was doing this as well because um, uh, as I say it was like the first six weeks or something of working at Textualize and Will had buggered off on holiday uh, you know he, he was working well on holiday um, and so I was working here and you know mostly worked from home and I just sat on the sofa with my um, MacBook and just like hunched over and bang 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 coffee 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 bang 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 that kind of thing the odd iron brew as well. And um, off on a tangent, but I actually did myself so much damage to like my chest muscles here, my back muscles, just hunched over on the sofa in a really bad position. I ended up having to go to the physio. So it cost me like 50 quid um, to go and see the physio to sort of basically get told off for coding on the sofa, quite rightly so. Um, so yeah, I probably did that weird bit of coding. Right, okay. That's Oh, look at the state of that button now. Our buttons have changed as well. This isn't great. Okay, let's stop trying to actually um, fit that in there and let's try and actually do it properly. Right, there's no reason that needs an ID. There's no reason that needs an ID. Uh, okay, so. Oh, what? What the? Why have I got two of those there? They're both for the same thing. They would, that was actually genuinely there as well. Holy shit. Weird as, weird as, right, don't need that. And, right, so we're gonna say, the horizontal that's inside the, the screen. Right, actually no, let's go, um, think, 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 think this through Dave, think this through, think, 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 think. Right, 
Let's just think this through. Yeah, definitely too much coffee that last time. Uh, definitely one of those afternoons where I was just like banging out code and experimenting and things like that. Um, so we're going to say... <laughs> I, can recent, I recently pushed out a fix something because the icon keeps getting in the way. Um, wait, can I pop out the chat? Uh... No, I can't. Uh, there's a little um, reaction icon that is stuck in the... Hang on. What happens if I make the window a bit wider? Uh, there we go. That sort of helps. I recently pushed a fix with the something commented out uh, so I can relate. Right. Okay, cool. Um, so, in the lookup screen, we've got an input that we want. Definitely want it for that. I want it to be as wide. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. As wide as possible. And also, there's going to be a horizontal. Do I want a blank border? Yeah, probably do want a blank border. Get rid of that, and actually, that goes there. And that input, we can narrow it down. Right, that goes there. Oh, you've got it as well, because I'm seeing, yeah, yeah, the icon's bothering him as well. Um, yeah, I'm seeing it in um, in the live chat window in OBS, um, but yeah, it's probably the same as... Uh, YouTube as well. Yay! Okay, almost there. Almost there. Um, let's not talk about why suddenly there's half the damn screen missing. Um, <laughs> um, why is half the damn screen missing? Actually, an excellent question. What? What? Did I just not save? Because that's working now. What? It could be that I just hadn't saved, which is weird because I, <laughs> I just like instinctively save all the time. Okay, well that's tidied that up. That's tidied that up, which should also mean, yay! That's one less complaint about creating attributes outside of init. Ah. Okay, 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 let's tidy that one up. So what's the other one? that um, it's moaning about. Oh, it's this bloody stat screen that does nothing really useful. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh. It's this. Right. You can tell this code's really old, because, like, I put the data table inside a container so I could add a border to it. 
What? Also, where does that... Classes equals border. Where the hell did that come from? I don't think... There isn't even a class for that anymore. So that's weird. Ha! Okay, right, yeah. So I've got... <laughs> Shows it. Also, I'm using layers. Why am I using layers? What am I using layers for? Base and label. This this smells of workaround for something in an, in an early version of textual. So it's this thing here. Oh! Oh, 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 I remember. Because textual didn't used to have border labels. And this was my way of doing it. Ah, yeah, hence the, yeah. Okay. So the label and the um, data table are on different layers. And I used an offset to get this label out over the um, out over the border, that's why. <sighs> wow, so retro, so retro. It's almost as old as me. Also, I'm not sure why I. <laughs> I've got this version of, I'm overriding focus for some damn reason, as I mentioned this earlier. But again, now I look at it, I suspect it was sort of some workaround or something like that. This is, this is some real um, textual application archaeology happening here. <laughs> oh, this is such bad code. I don't... This top packages thing and everything is just like such a stupid thing. I think I was just doing it to play with a data table or something like that. It doesn't really serve a useful purpose, I don't think. Um, if I pull it up again. Like... Who cares? This this would be a interesting... I seem to remember it's, um, yeah, quite literally... Is it the... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Top 100 packages by size, but I can't even remember what size means. Is it is it literally how big the package is, as in how much space it's using in the package index? And is that for all versions, or is it size by how much download there's been, or something like that? It's so useless. I'm actually tempted to just get rid of it, because it's so pointless. Um... I'm like, who cares? But this sort of thing could have been interesting back in the day, maybe, when there wasn't just all this machine learning -y type stuff just filling up um, this list. Sod it. I'm going to get rid of it. it. It doesn't serve any purpose. Let's concentrate. Let's um, make it... A focused application. Focused, focused, focused. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do this. What am I doing? Right, first things first. I'm just going to dive straight into the lookup screen. Don't need those screens anymore. Don't need that anymore. Um, I'm going to change the quitting thing at some point because Control Q is horrible. I'll just use Escape. 
why wouldn't I use escape? Um, on the lookup screen. Bindings, that's what I want rid of. Literally don't need that anymore. And then I can oops. Showing the most recent R package releases could be interesting, but yeah, top 100 packages by size isn't something I'd use often. I, yeah, I, I, I got no use for it. Um, I got no interest in it. And quite frankly, I'm not even really sure what it's actually showing me, as in like, is it just like, these are the package hogs. These are the people who should be contributing lots of money. Um, that kind of thing. Oh, flip. Right, there we go. No more of that nonsense. Nice, focused application that does one thing and does it mildly well. <laughs> um, right. More or less more or less back in the right spot. There's a bit more focus and stuff like that. There's so much about this that I want to tidy up. Um, the the way this looks, the the form of the output and all that kind of stuff could be a lot a lot tidier. Um, looking at the classifiers, this is one thing that um, I've been toying with the idea of doing. I, th I think I, I have this note in, in Apple Notes where I've just written down random ideas for things to make and everything. And at one point, I'm pretty sure I wrote down um, Python classifier hi hierarchy widget, which could just be a tree, basically, or something like that. But it would be interesting to, you know, have a widget that shows this in a slightly more broken down uh, way, you know, so you can kind of drill down, or it, it would be auto expanded maybe, or something like that. But rather than just this honking great big list of text, it would be, you know, a little tree view that is programming language, Python versions, you know, that kind of stuff. Maybe, don't know, could be interesting. Um, one of those things I'm kind of thinking could work. All this stuff down here, as I said before, um, could probably do with it's a bit. It's, it's a bit too busy, and it could probably be tidied up by using collapsibles, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, all these things, they're all useful. Um, this is where uh, the things that, you know, um, I'll have to find the two. I'm sure you two did something about, yeah, using um, extra fields in 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 the uh, metadata and everything yeah they should be in here because if you do have i don't know if i've taken care of buy me a coffee you know that kind of thing uh yeah um or, or whatever they should be in there it would make sense that they're in there um hmm can definitely improve this. It makes sense, obviously, that I would want to have things like the name, the version, the summary, the actual URL, the author information, that kind of stuff. Have those up top. Make sure they come first, rather than just spew everything out in the order that it's found in. Or, yeah, actually, I wonder what sort of order it ends up looking like. That'd be another thing for me to experiment with. Right, anyway, what was it doing? I was getting rid of that. I, I think I've made the mistake of... No, they're all the same thing. Cool. Okay, that's that removed. Uh, 
Oh. I can get rid of that as well, can I? So, <laughs> the thing I was trying to get rid of, I got rid of everything that used it, but didn't get rid of the thing. Which is that thing. Don't need that. <laughs> Git um <laughs> needs to be an alias now. <laughs> uh, um, um, um. Okay. This um, whole package could be a lot easier, and, uh, a, a lot simpler now. Right, dialing in. Let's just get rid of that. And then what did I have got bindings being imported when I don't need those anymore? I feel bad writing doc strings in front uh, in front of Timothy because he's like the doc string expert. If there's one person on the face of the planet you don't want to write doc strings in front of, at least without feeling anxious. Yay, okay, and I'm going to, um, see you, Timmy's, uh, ah, Timothy's going, so yeah, it was good to see you, thanks for dropping by, really appreciate it, have a good rest of your day. Right. We're going to just, I just want that. Oh no, I'll keep that as well. There we go. Yay, we're linting okay. Type checking's like.
take a while for a very, very, very small. <sighs> oh, I did want that. I did want that. Okay. Actually, um, I just need it to be a dev dependency, don't I? For, I've been out for a 5k run today, but I want to go out for a wee bit of a walk, but suddenly I can hear it raining. <sighs> Can't see it would rain. Yay! Okay. So that one's just down on. That one's on me. I did want that. I removed that right at the top of this session. Right, look up. It's literally just nine, nine, nine inch nails. Right, there we go. Yay! And we're type checking. We are type checking. So, there's a lot of things I want to tidy up. A lot of things I want to tidy up. But I think I'm now in a position where the package is a bit more in line with how I do things these days. I've been doing this with a few of my packages recently. Um, there's lots of things I could do, like the, you know, this bit of CSS here. This could be nested CSS, it yeah, would just be a little bit tidier, read a little bit better, that kind of thing. Actually, before I actually do finish, I'm just going to go through and... This is a bit boring. But while I'm here, and because it's raining outside, so I don't want to go for a walk just yet. Just get rid of all these types. Because although I don't actually have um, I don't have anything in place for um, generating docs for this, not docs that work off the doc strings. You do still have the benefit with any reasonable IDE. Um, you should find that... Um, do I even have it set up? I, I think I've kind of turned it off in um, Emacs. But yeah, you know, in certain stuff, um, you'd get the um, yeah some kind of hover text to show you the doc string for those types and stuff like that. I think I've got it turned off in my setup here just because like generally I find it personally it gets in the way more than it helps me oh, I could probably write some handy little macro to do this but 
I'm kind of sunk cost fallacy now. I'm, I mean, I'm doing it. Oops. Mispressed. There was definitely a point where um, annotating the uh, doc strings with the actual types made sense. But documentation tools are a lot better these days. Um, I've still got that top 100 thing. That isn't used anymore. I can probably lose that. I'll come back to that. I'll try and remember to come back to that. We can definitely see there's quite a few things in this that I would, I'd like to tidy up um, because they're hangovers from this being a quick hack. It, it was a quick hack. It was about just seeing this app, along with a small handful of others, was all about just building stuff with textual and seeing where the pain points were um, way back. And yeah, I ended up writing a little document that was like, here are things that I found super annoying. Uh, while writing these apps, while developing these apps. And also these are the things that I actually found straightforward and actually really nicely done. Um, laying out with CSS was really quite tricky to start with. And I think uh, it really helped us hone in on the best way of doing the layouts and stuff like that and also communicating it um because even then i was like so many so many people a lot of people run into this when they first start um building textual apps they'll 100 percent this and they'll 50 percent that and all this kind of stuff and it it and it feels like the most natural way of doing things it feels like the most obvious way of doing things but actually in almost every case where you feel compelled to say, I want this thing to be a percentage of, the, of this other thing, generally what you probably want is to have the children share the space. And that's where the FRs come in. And so rather than trying to say this child is 25% of the space and this child is 75% of the space, which can lead to little weird edge cases, um, you know, it's better to say one FR and three FR, that kind of thing. Um, and then all the work is done for you. And me bumping up against that, writing things like this, helped me f notice the mistakes that would be made um, early on, the, mis you know, the, the kind of um, blind alleys that you could run down while developing uh, a layout. And so, you know, it made it easier for me to recognise that if someone was having a problem, someone was like, oh, I'm trying to lay this thing out and it's not working for me. Um, yeah, it made it easier for me, uh, yeah, having written a handful of applications, actual applications, it made it easier for me to look at what uh, the pain that people were going through and go, ah, hmm, the problem you've got there is this. Don't do it that way, do it this way. Um, so it was, yeah, definitely a great exercise. 
Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, I can't type. Doc strings is one of those words that just does not flow off my fingers and I don't know why. Um, right, I think I can just nuke that. In fact, I'm confident I can. No. There we go. Looking good. Looking good, looking good, looking good. I think there's a lot I could do with the layout of this. Could make it, I mean, you know, for example, not having it been a honking great big list that you scroll through, it would make sense to maybe have, should we say, the main metadata? In, have, have the data in tabs, maybe something like that um, and you'd have the main information and maybe the long description which tends to be the readme isn't always but tends to be the readme in another tab something like that I think I'd need to do take a poll of lots of different packages because it could be that you know other people surprisingly don't package their application, uh, you know, package their packages the same way I do, and they don't use the README as the description as a long description. They just use a longer description, but it's four lines. In which case, having a um, having a tab to show what could be a very long README, but to only show four or five lines doesn't make much sense. So probably have a think about that. I could, yeah, have it be a bit adaptive. So already in there, there's some code I seem to remember that says, is the type of the long description markdown? If it is, use the markdown widget. Otherwise, just show as text, that kind of thing. So there's those kinds of decisions already being made, and that could go somewhat further. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I've just realized I don't need this at all. Uh, it's even better than that. Hang on. I didn't I am I just putting stuff back that wasn't there before? I just realized that stats pack oh no. Stats is I can get rid of the whole stats thing. That's that's the thing. That's the problem. Because I was just look I was looking at that code thinking, hang on a second. That that type there. which was a dict of int values inside a dict. I was like, that, that's not, that typing doesn't make sense. And then I realized that the whole thing is, that's all to do with um, 
yeah, those stats, the top 100 thing. So I can actually lose that, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I could just lose, I could just lose the whole thing. There we go, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. The structure of the um, package is starting to look a little bit over-engineered now just because there's stuff I've removed. Um, you know, have, having a screen subdirectory just to hold the one screen sort of seems a little bit weird. So I may go back over this and just simplify things now. I, I do like this kind of structure. You know, if I've got multiple widgets, that I'm going to be using all over the place. I'll I'll put them in their own subdirectory screens, which will often use these widgets. If there's multiple screens, I'll put them in their own directory and so on. Um, which is where I was with this, but I'm not there with this now. So there's probably not much point in that anymore. But I'm not going to get into that now. Okay, I think. That tidies things up quite nicely. It's one thing I gotta do. Gotta spell that right. Okay, I think, I think we're good, I think we're good. Before I actually package this up and make another release, um, I want to make these other changes. I want to try and improve how it looks, but to do that, I definitely needed to just, yeah, tidy up the repository, make it more like how I actually um, uh, handle the development of Python packages these days and stuff like that. I've yeah, developed my make file a little bit more that I tend to use. Um, I should probably turn it into some kind of cookie cut thing at some point, I guess. But like, you know, I have this make file now that is, you know, pretty large, has lots of things in it does lots of useful things and generally I just copy it over and change that and that's it and everything else flows from there and then I've got all the setting up the virtual environment, um, check, uh, resetting up the virtual environment, checking whether dependencies are, out, are outdated for, for the development environment and updating them and things like that, doing linting type checking all that kind of stuff, doing the packaging, um, running um, black over it and things like that. Uh, yeah, I tend to even have things like, oop, that. So using make repl opens up a Python prompt in the virtual environment without me having to activate a virtual environment myself, uh, without having to activate a virtual environment myself, that kind of thing. Um, which just makes quickly testing stuff a, a, a whole lot easier. And then, oh, and then there's stuff like that, which just tidies things up. And there's even that, you know, uh, it's sort of a self-documenting um, make file, which is, it uses this thing. I, I won't claim to have uh, come up with that. Um, 
I, you know, I know what it's doing. I'm, I, I'm comfortable enough with Orc and things like that to use something like this, but um, I found a version of this on the net ages back, um, and then I tweaked it a little bit for my own purposes, and it is literally a case of it lets you then write these sort of doc strings, as it were, in your make file, and then when you do make help, that target looks within that the make file that it's in and just pulls out those doc strings and shows you the targets and tells you what they do. Um, which is handy if anyone grabs my repo and they're at least comfortable enough with running uh, make, then you know they're good to go. Technically it would make sense to actually make make help be the default target, but Generally, I like to have make B run the app that I'm working on, so it makes it um, nice and easy to get going. Right, well, I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, the I think the main aim's achieved. I've managed to tidy everything up. I've got the code running. I've tweaked a couple of things regarding changes in textual. The, one of the main ones was the way the vertical works now, and we've got vertical scroll and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't like how the application looks. I definitely want to make some changes there. Um, oh, I still need to fix that bug, where if you actually type in the name of a unknown package, it crashes. There's just... I don't know if that's always been there. It's a very good chance it's always been there, in which case that would suggest that no one's ever really used this, something like that. There's all kinds of fun things could happen in the future. Um, I don't know how... I don't know how big the actual index is these days, but there could be... You know, you could do a thing of actually have... If there's an easy way of getting the names of packages they could be grabbed in the background and then some list, autocomplete list could be populated and everything. But that seems a bit too busy. I'm not sure that's great, uh, a great way of doing things. But yeah, I'm going to make some uh, changes to the style of that screen. Um, I'll tighten things up a bit. And then the actual content, the, w the way the metadata from the um, from the package information is displayed. I'm going to try and tidy that up, make it look more agreeable, make it look nicer to the eye, and then also in doing that, try and um, do the thing that you know Timothy has uh, suggested in the issue that I pointed out earlier, whereby it's uh, not hard coded uh, in terms of what information it shows. It should just show everything that's in there. Um, and that would be that would be nice. I'm going to go with that. But I also still want to keep a semblance of a useful order. You know, you as I said before, you want to see the author. You probably want don't want to have to scroll really far down to find the dependencies because maybe you want to look at the list of dependencies that a package has. Because yeah, it, it, this again, I, I'm not sure there's a um, a huge. I just realised, as, uh, as I'm staring at the screen, you can't see it, but I just realised in the place where I spelt um, Pi Pi with the Pi, upper and lower case. Um, I'm not sure there's a huge use for this. Um, uh, yeah, I, as I said before, I wrote it because there was an API that I could write a, a wrapper textual application around, and it was pertinent to people who do Python stuff, so it was... It was a useful little quick hack. It was something that could be shown off quite easily and would maybe grab a few people's attention. Um, but it could be handy for things like, you know, you want to look at a package and you want to gauge just how many dependencies it's got because it could be that you're trying to find, um, you know, the best package for doing, you know, solving problem X and you've got five options and you want to quickly look at them and assess which one has the greatest number of uh, dependencies and I suppose that um, you know the rabbit hole could go further with something like this although you're starting to get into the you know whole dependency graph solving problem thing but you know maybe you could look at the dependencies of the de de it could look at the dependencies of the dependencies and gauge you know how many they've got and give you that information these could all be little things that get added. 
Um, but yeah, to to round this off, um, I'm I'm where I wanted to be with this. I wanted to get the code tidy. I wanted it to be in, um, in line with all my other Python repositories and and um, also just check it for bit rot and stuff like that. And there was definitely some bit rot, and that's all solved. So anyway, um, I haven't got my control panel up because uh, it wants me to log in and I'd already started streaming and talking and stuff like that and didn't want to um, uh, didn't want to start going through the whole login process and everything. I should have been paying attention. Um, so I don't know if there's anyone watching, but if there is anyone watching, thanks for uh, checking in and for anyone who catches and watches this recording at some point in the future. Thanks for watching as well, and goodbye.